dad you know putting his sights on that old empty net there huh? a tiny little inch he's ready to put in the little goalie roly here we go matt we ready over here we're ready i'm ready here we go pigskin fans the moment you've been waiting for all season the reason we sit through exhibition games and that whole regular season it's right around the corner at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of super bowl 55 is bringing their golden ticket giveaway with up to $55 million in prizes up for grabs. All you have to do to get your share of these huge prizes is under DraftKings free Super Bowl prediction challenge. Once you submit your picks, you'll get a free instant prize up to $25,000. And if you have the most predictions correct, you could win the top prize of $1 million. Yes. Download the app now and enter the free prediction challenge. Answer questions like, who will score last? And boom! Get ready to make it rain! DraftKings has paid out over $7 billion to its players since 2012, so they know a thing or two about big paydays. All right, everybody, listen up. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code THPN to enter the free $55 million Super Bowl Prediction Challenge. Everyone gets an instant prize up to $25,000 just for playing. So use promo code THPN now and enter the free $55 million Super Bowl challenge only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of Super Bowl 55. Terms and conditions and eligibility restrictions apply. Woo! Yeah. com for details. All right. <laughs> Mike, we got a loaded show today. Uh, I got a little blog happy, as you can see in the notes. Uh, so there, there's a lot of text. Um, <laughs> today we're going to be going over uh, Vladdy's first goal with the wing dings. Oh, and uh, I, I, ultimately leading uh, the, the reset, uh, as we hope, after that Blackhawks fiasco. Uh, of the Red Wings getting back to playing low event hockey, low scoring hockey, and squeaking out uh, maybe an overtime victory next time. Who knows? Uh, we're going to talk about how we look for the first uh, tenth of the season. Take a look at uh, Game Two against the Dallas Stars. Uh, we'll also get you prepped for the Florida Panthers since we won't see you guys till uh, that series is done. And uh, we've got some games to play as well. All right, everybody. So before we do jump fully and we have to ask that you check out, if you are a Jets fan or just a fan of food, the Skates and Plates podcast, take a quick listen. Calling all Jets fans and foodies. What's going on, guys? I'm Brandon Rewicki, the host of Skates and Plates on the Hockey Podcast Network. Look, if you love Jets hockey, this is the place for you. In-depth breakdowns from every game, a deep dive into the big plays and moments from Winnipeg's season, and all the Jets talk you will not find anywhere else. We got it for you on Skates and Plates. Plus, if you love carbs and everything tasty, we jump into the world of food as well. Once a week, we also speak with a member of the local culinary scene to highlight their great stories and the great food they put out. So there it is. Hockey, Jets, food, drink, everything good in life. It's right here on Skates and Plates on the Hockey Podcast Network. Whoa! Well, time to talk about Nemisticon's first goal. All right. <laughs> That podcast sounds delicious. I'm I'm pretty jealous of that. Um, <laughs> Classic radio voice, by the way, Brandon. You uh, you nailed it. That is he. I he might be. I think he is a TSN radio host. But if he's not, 
there is certainly a future in that. Yeah, God in Detroit, damn. you know, if uh, our our boy on the weekend, hey, Caputo, ever needs a day off, uh, oh, I think yeah, Brandon could slip right in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's more of a he, he. I can't imagine that they heard his voice and said he's perfect for radio. Like I, Pat Caputo. We, we mean good Caputo, for like, Brandon. Yeah, Pat Caputo's good for ordering like corned beef hash at the corner diner. Like that's that's about all I think his voice is good for. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> and only the corned beef. Make sure beef you hash. don't don't be too conservative with the potato salad. Is that is that out of the can? I don't want it. <laughs> you use uh, uh, mustard or mayo. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, sorry, Matt. Uh, we can move on and talk some actual hockey here. Uh, Red Wings. Woo! We got our uh, our Tukas's handed to us. We'll put it. We'll, we'll start out G-rated. We don't need to jump right into the R language. Uh, we got our Tukas's handed to us, and then uh, we saw Dallas next on the menu. And uh, woo! I don't know about you, but uh, I uh, I had a prediction that was about uh, we we're going to lose by a touchdown, and somehow we took them all the way to overtime. Matt, are the Red Wings back? Mike, this felt like. Uh, do you remember the first time you went on the Millennium Falcon, or what? Not the Millennium Falcon, the Millennium Force. Uh, I, you, I will the, never forget that moment. You went on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> the Millennium Force, and I turned to Chewie and said, "We're home." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never oh forget god. that moment. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to stop laughing. <laughs> All right. So this uh, analogy is going <laughs> to die here with my Don't get laughing. cocky, kid. Come on, man. But there was that first hill on the Millennium Force. And it yeah. kind of felt like we took that first hill. And the second hill was coming. And in your head, you're ready for that next. I mean, it's the Dallas Stars who... Oh boy, handily handled, <laughs> took care of that first season, handily handled, uh, yeah. took care of that first series. Um, I mean, right, God damn, like nobody could stop their power play and it looked like it was going to crush us, us again. But um, I don't know, I guess uh, we, this was the second hill. This is where that the little tiny hill on the Millennium Force where you thought you were, you were in for another huge drop and uh, it was nice. It was, you still dropped, no, I, I think you still you're... fell. But it wasn't yeah. so bad this time. I think your um, I think your analogy really works uh, because when I was making my snaking my way through the line, um, it definitely felt like ten months worth of waiting in line, and that's how long we waited to watch Red Wing hockey again. Um, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, oh, boys, it's, it's right here, it's coming. And then the Millennium Force, man, it's a newer roller coaster. So that initial thrill, that that first hill, it goes by really quick, and it was like, wow, look at us, oh. Oh my God, we got two wins already. And then it was like the Blackhawks. Ah! <laughs> we just plummeted to the earth. And then luckily Dallas came around. And I don't know if the Red Wings just kind of dialed it up a little bit. Because uh, I don't know, maybe they got a little something for, for Dallas. They've been saving it up. Uh, but we didn't embarrass ourselves. It, uh, we actually played a little defense. Uh, didn't let our, our beloved goalie uh, hang out to dry like we did in Chicago. Uh, and uh, it, it it wasn't quite the promise of uh, victories, uh, but at we'll least made us feel like, okay, if, if the whole team's decimated by COVID, maybe we can at least be competitive like we were against the Stars. Right. And I, I did want to share for anybody watching on YouTube the. Uh, so this is from Twitter, Mr. Yeah. NHL. So don't, please, God, don't <laughs> make me edit another video. But here it is for 30 seconds. No sound. Uh, so please, God. All right. So here it is. Uh, <laughs> This is that goal. Oh, I but I shared this for too. I shared it for too long. Now they're gonna make me yeah. get rid of it. Damn it. No, um, I uh, I think that's a an ac really accurate assessment. Um, when we got our uh, our tukuses, uh handed to us, uh, particularly the you know uh, first game of the season, and then um, uh, you know we got destroyed by Chicago. For me, it kind of looked like the Red Wings were almost trying to play chess. Uh, but I think that this they were team playing hockey. Well, I would say that <laughs> they're literally on the ice. I would uh, say that metaphorically, they no, should I, be playing. They should be playing hungry, hungry hippos. They should just be banging away on the tail, just ah, just trying to get as anything to get in that hippo mouth that they can. Um, I'm so sorry, I ruined that joke. 
Yeah, I was really geared up for that. I was really excited for my Hungry Hungry Hippos. Uh, but there's no finesse with Hungry Hungry Hippos. Just sometimes you knock over your you know kid brother and then you bang away on two hippo mouths. So that's that's what we should be gunning for. Yeah, do I, you feel I, like crap for ruining that joke? You should. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it, what, what the, I think... The, uh, I mean, the next element uh, about this is, is we seem to have like great shifts right after scoring goals. So that's yeah. where if this thing can at least happen, we almost saw the Red Wings make it two to nothing on the next uh, Larkin Bertuzzi shift in Broming. Uh, it, it's just, it's like these quick little sniffs of success. It, it's, it's the blood in the water that the Red Wings need. Unfortunately, they're like some sort of sloth shark that immediately, <laughs> like when the blood leaves, they aren't still, there isn't still the hunger or, or it's, uh, it's very fleeting. Um, yeah. They get the salt water right back in there and it flushes it out real quick. So if they don't score on that next shift, which I believe, like, honestly, if they did make it two to nothing, I would expect to see three to nothing. I, I really think like this, this shark mentality is kind of where they're coming from. And you get the next round of shifts are all top level. It's kind of like, oh my God, you guys, we can do this. And it, it's all about morale. It's about w what we talked about with Anthony Mantha, where we're like, we know, we know Mantha doesn't suck. All but right. there is an element to it of when he looks at the lineup card at the start of the day and he saw, what did he see? Uh, Phil Pla and Glenn Denning, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday, and it's like, yeah. anybody that sees that is like, you just slump. Where uh, the difference Today in the lineup was Nemistikov, who, you know, obviously wasn't playing at that time with, with Manta, but Nemistikov and Bobby Ryan, where it's like, okay, you guys are going to be scoring today. And we'll get into it in a, in a little bit, but then that line with the, the first period goal uh, then was hot the rest of the game, including Nemistikov. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a second, but I, I want to get your thoughts on that. The, the blood in the water the shark mentality that the Red Wings seem to have for wanting to rip hockey teams apart right after a goal, uh, but not, not, I don't know. It it's, does. It's fleeting. It's proven fleeting because we lost two to one. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a team just kind of want to, um, I don't want to phrase this. Like they, they really careful, like positively or negatively just like, keep the same kind of composure where it's like, yeah, we got a goal, man, we get 50 of these things. And then they, they, like every line after line after that just starts peppering shots and having scoring chances. But man, it's really just a deflated, you know, nobody came to my birthday party balloon. If they let in a goal and, you know, we saw it in Chicago where it's just like a, a huge, you know, fart sound just coming out and everybody's having bad shifts, you know, outside of like, you know, the Larkins of, of the team, but it, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like so, the it's anti... so contagious with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's essentially taking that exact idea and just going, you know, we're not coming back. And yeah. Then, it's, it's a real, uh, locomotive. Yeah. Right. Um, so I did, I did want to talk about that, uh, about Nemistikov and, uh, Anthony Manta and Bobby Ryan's line. Um, a lot of, Led all forward lines with uh, an expected goals for 0.46. So that's kind of hard to measure because we've talked about it in a few different episodes where it's tough to get a one to be your expected goals because you're always breaking that expected goals uh, statistic or the analytic uh, based on, you know, when, whenever you finally do score because, you know, the likelihood of, of everyone scoring every game is extremely low. So that's, uh, but the point is, is that when it came to getting close to a goal and preventing goals, uh, that's where this line was so successful. And when I, I talk about preventing goals, Mike, their expected yeah. goals for percentage was 96.58%. That means nearly, on five on five, nearly 100% of the time when this line was out there, they were the ones getting the scoring chances as opposed to their opponent. And if their opponent was getting one, very low likely to score chances. Uh, just, I mean, this line dominated. And uh, the best part, and the, the stat we've been really high on and focusing on when it when it comes to this team finding goals, because we, we do think it's really important for these chances to come, uh, because we're limiting events, but the high danger chances. 
and they just took 100% of those for the game, this line. So their opponent didn't even sniff one. Uh, so I, I just, like with that, you're, you you want to talk about the eyeball test. You want to say how this team looks. Well, Namistikov scores a goal, and for the rest of the game, him and his two buddies, uh, Bobby Ryan and Anthony, Man- Anthony Manta, just destroyed whenever they were out there. Um, I think I think the one thing that would have helped this line even a, a little bit more was probably some <laughs> Uh, less uh, penalty killing time for the team overall. Keep this line out there a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I, this for a developing team, for a team that we said in the last ep- episode is on schedule, right? We're supposed to suck. <laughs> if we were the Toronto Maple Leafs and had this record right now, be very upset. Yeah, but we're supposed to suck. So this game for us is a major victory and we get to point to things like that as reasons why so you know, uh yeah go just, ahead. you know it's just something where uh we talked about it earlier where I, I would not put money on the red wings unless there was exactly zero injuries and we were playing a team that doesn't score very much um if we can have this line you know start to gel and show some consistency um as as much as we like Sedina and Robbie Fabry, I think it would be such an immense uh, like asset uh, facet of this team if Fabry was the third line center with Sedina instead of having to rely on him as the second. Because I feel like yeah. we're going to get a lot more offense and defense playing Mantha and Mistikoff, and then Bobby Ryan. You know, he we know he's one of our more skilled uh, shooters. Um, so having, having Robbie with, you know, his, his skill is, uh, you know, creating plays on the offensive end, not really yet known for the, the two way play. Um, it, it would be really nice to kind of have him as like, a you know, uh, a, almost like a specialist on that third line instead of, we really need to rely on you for points on the second line. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice luxury to have right now. Hopefully, hopefully this is not just an aberration and we can see more of, uh, the Mesnikov, Mantha, and Ryan. Right. And and we're also talking about the success of this uh this line. So if if you want to say, oh, it's just one game, but don't forget this is against the Dallas team that on separate lines gets to say they have Klingberg and uh Heiskanen. So it's I like all things point to this being a good thing. And I love that you mentioned like now we're trying to find secondary scoring. If if like the the scoring chances continue to come whenever Bertuzzi and Larkin are on the ice. Let's say this works out. Let's play another game. Let's see what happens. But let's say this plays out. You got your second line, but your point to having Fabry drop down to the third line and hey, maybe it's Sedina too. And I have, you know, at this point I have no problem. Maybe Sedina tries out the first line. But when you look at somebody like um, now we've we've had we've talked about him before. I got to say, I've been listening to a podcast that features him. So now I know how to say his name. He said it's like loose chicken. So it's Dom loose chisen. <laughs> uh, so he's <laughs> I've been saying the chisen for the longest time, but it's loose yeah. chisen. Um, okay. Like loose chicken. Uh, when he scores out these guys. Robbie Fabry, everybody that's not uh, on the first line, so that would be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm covering my face, Mantha, Larkin, and Bertuzzi, everyone below them scores out as like a third line forward. So anytime that we can pull a guy, and we don't have too much to measure, measure Zadina, but anytime we can pull one of those guys that was in the second line and found some success down to the third line, they should find more success. We're not necessarily talking about Matchup wise, right now we're not talking about what should our third line be doing when they're on the ice. Um, like I mean, we we remember the Stanley Cup days where we had our our grind line. We're not necessarily playing that game right now. We're trying to say that we have an opportunity to score on three different lines. So let's play it out that way. Um, I I just it based on a guy who spends his whole life creating data tables. And uh, gamer scores, I mean, the, the score for those guys is all third line and lower. So, again, if you, this second line can be formidable, and this combination of Nemistikov, Mantha, and Bobby Ryan is either A, putting up the scoring chances so that we see a goal, or B, holding the puck for almost 100% of the time 
So there's no goals. It's you cross. Then you crossed off 25% of the game. Now you've got to figure out another 75%. Even though we have Larkin and Bertuzzi, we say we have 50% figured out. So now, boom. Figured out the Red Wings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, yeah, there we go. Uh, that's right. We did our own version of be the GM. Uh, so Mike, the low event strategy, uh, for Jeff Blaschel. And I, I did want to highlight too, Jeff Blaschel. Uh, can you hear me? Boop, 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 yeah. boop. Jeff Blaschel's strategy, uh, nearly lands a win. Now that sounds ridiculous. Cause uh, I'm sitting here going, good job, Jeff. And I'm saying we almost won a game, but don't forget who's, <laughs> who's on this team. And of course, don't forget about all the injuries and the COVID. So. You know, there it is. Yeah. Uh, like first and third period, we owned the expected goals as a team. So we talked about that second line owning the expected goals. But as a team, we had two thirds of the expected goals in the first and third period. Third period, a little bit more important because we always talk about how the, the wings seem to drop off in the third period and get blown out. High danger scoring chances for the entire game, nearly 60%. So they did a fantastic job of limiting those those shots up front and earning a couple more uh, themselves. And I, I just, if we're going to go game by game and take a dump all over Blashill's bald head, I think it's time that we shine it up. Let's get a little sparkle on top and <laughs> say good job. Because, because this is him. This is what his strategy is. This is let's limit the events. And lo and behold, the events were limited uh, out in front of the net, and at least to a point where we we won over Dallas. So again, I think I think the point we want to keep recycling here or, or circling back to is that this game kind of felt like a reset back to what was working in those first four games. So now yeah. we're back to that. And I, I just, Mike, I don't know if you want to shine up Blashell's head a little bit, or if... yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, it's definitely you know he's kind of looking at the ingredients he has to work with. And I, I would be surprised if he, if uh, the Red Wing analytical team didn't present something like this to the players, you know, <laughs> like guys, uh, not a lot of skill in this room. Okay, look to the man on your left. Look to the man on your right. You're seated between a couple guys who really can't deke anybody. So what we're gonna do? This is a color board. You can see right here. All right. <laughs> All we care about, we're just going to defend this area right here, all right? And if by chance, my God, the puck ends up on the other side of the ice, who here's played Hungry Hungry Hippos? <laughs> beautiful. That's how we're going to score goals. We're just going to go out there and much, much, much away at that ice. Um, yeah, Matt, I, I mean, what you're doing is just basically painting that picture of uh, statistically there is a real rhyme and reason to what Blash was doing. It's okay that we don't have the most talented group. Uh, there's still ways to win games. There's still ways to look competitive. Uh, we can't have all these young guys and just teach them that uh, when you step on the ice and skates, you're just going to lose all the time uh, because losing can, uh, you know, really get in your brain. Uh, you'll start to form bad habits. Uh, you'll, you know, it, it'll it can have an impact on your entire career. So I think Blash will, you know, making an effort to. Put these guys in situations where they can succeed is key to the future of this team. So th these aren't strategies where it's necessarily going to, you know, open up the ice and you know, you know, maybe these guys will be able to, you know, get their get their creative wings out, you know, to make some plays happen. But they're going to be playing closer to winning hockey, and I think at some point, uh, mired in this rebuild, at some point you have to start, you know, taking some steps steps to be like. This is how you win. So, Blashell, consider that beautiful head, nice and polished. <laughs> I I think now I want to make a segment week after week of like get some smoothie sounds, like, and then you know a shine sound, and we'll figure out which direction we're gonna go with Jeff. I was not um, sure where you're going with the first sound effect. I was I was expecting was that, uh, but not the not the first one. Oh, uh, I should oh, yeah. I, I should. Yeah, I, I did want to throw in there, too. I, I, I'm going to steal a point from uh, another one of our rival podcasts, and I, I really liked it, was, uh, and this this is from uh, the Wings for Breakfast, where Max Boltman and uh, Prashant Iyer said one of the one of the main complaints about Blashell, so if you guys missed it, 
one of the main complaints is his ability to develop players, or you would make the argument to get rid of them so that they're not developed incorrectly. Mike, what you just said is a wonderful addition to that point, uh, like the cherry on top. Like you got to make sure these guys see that there are differences to play in different hockey games and how to find victories. It's not always about trying to make one guy look like Connor McDavid. So I, I think that's a wonderful point. Uh, but the point and, and the, the point about developing players uh, was basically, well, look at Anthony Mantha, Dylan Larkin, and Tyler Bertuzzi learning under Jeff Blaschel. And now going back to Dom Luce Chichen, <laughs> his gamer score says they're all first liners. So are they elite? Not yet. But if they're scoring out as first liners, I, I don't see how that's a failure in development. And then the rest of this team now has a bunch of Band-Aids on it who I, I don't know how many guys we're going to look at. Besides Zadina, who's out with COVID, uh, are going to be looked at as just guys we're using to get to the core. All right. Uh, Mike, we, we did take a, quite a while to wrap up uh, what's going on in that. <laughs> what happened to that first game in Dallas? Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll try and I'll try and push forward here. I wanted to talk about the first tenth of the season. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, we got five points, seventh, seventh in the central. That's all high level stuff. So as we dive a little bit deeper, oh, are you? Uh, it looks like Mike might be typing me uh, some notes. But uh, here, here's the thing: our PDO is ninety seven point seven. That's within the range where you say this team is performing at a point where they'll probably be like this is where they should be at so that's fine uh because you're looking for anything outside of the 103 percent and under the 97 percent where you're like okay something's going wrong so we're still in that we're still in the bubble but what i would point out is that our shooting percentage mike as a team is 5.3 percent the league average is 7.8 percent and league leaders are at 13 percent and the Florida Panthers, who we're about to face, are close to 11%. So it is possible for this to take quite a jump up. So what I what I kind of wanted to, to look at was the fact that this team is still kind of moving in the right way. They're moving in the right direction. But you can't expect, uh, I, I guess this is where PDO actually works, right? So we're, we're saying uh, it's, it's becoming like the new plus minus, like people just hate talking about PDO because it, it's hard to figure anything from it. Um, it, it's, it has those elements of, uh, well, it's, it's, it's like a reaction to what's already happened rather than giving us too much to work from, uh, going forward. So that's how you use it to, to go forward. You say there's that potential for the shot percentage to go up. To, uh, and, and even the Red Wings last season, Mike, were at 5.9% for shooting. So there is still that increase we can search for. Yeah. Um, but th there's there's so many things to help this shooting percentage go up and find new wins. Um, and I, I wanted to point to a couple of things. One is Anthony Mantha. When he's on the ice, Mike, his on-ice shooting percentage is the worst on the team. That's nothing against Mantha. Again, the PDO is a reflection of puck luck. It's 3.9%. And we are also, Mike, missing the Robbie Fabry, who is at 25% shooting so far this season, and Philip Sedina, who's bringing up a plus 16% on a shooting percentage. So this team should be doing a lot better than they are doing right now. When you take your best, arguably your your top one of your top three best forwards on the team, and he has the absolute worst on-ice shooting percentage of his pay grade, the worst in the league uh, for where he's getting paid and what his on-ice shooting percentage is. And uh, just a quick recap for everybody, on-ice shooting percentage means he's on the ice and what that shooting percentage is for everybody that's on the ice with him. So it's not necessarily just Anthony Mantha. But all of those guys combined, somebody else could have let one slip in. Somebody else could have accidentally knocked one in off their teeth. None of that's happening for Anthony Mantha right now. So my point being, I think we're doing okay. So I wanted to kind of wrap into this, this what have we done through the 10th tenth, uh, tenth of a season? I mean, obviously, results-wise, we're not happy with wins. Uh, we're all not happy with Mark Stahl. But I think from an offensive perspective, there's a lot of room to grow. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you had to, you had to hey, throw that in there. Hey, he's, Mark, he's, though, we're going to go an episode without uh, shaming him. He's listening right now going, come on, I stole the puck yesterday. I got a, a takeaway. Damn it. 
Um, He's like, they're nearing the 30 mark. They haven't mentioned it. Oh, I must, I must be getting better. No! How much time? He's checking the time. How much time is left? No! <laughs> um, um, I, yeah, so I, I just... I, I guess the best thing is that there's there's a lot of room for improvement, as we know, but we can actually put our finger on where that room for improvement is. Anthony Manta will start scoring, and it's just incredible how he is leading the team in expected goals and puck possession, and there's nothing there yet. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, if we could just kind of get him, you know, closer to like a, a league average, uh, that's a guy that we want to put on the ice, you know, for a lot of minutes um, and get him back to, you know, God forbid, even his career average, uh, like you you notated for us. Um, I mean, this could be a much different offense. Uh, I, I'm still waiting for somebody to ask the question, Mantha, she hurt? She got, she got something? She got a little, I don't know, plantar fasciitis? What's going on there? Um, he doesn't have like the Winnipeg itis, right? Where he's trying to fly a coop. <laughs> we talked about that in the last show. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully, I mean, not that I want him hurt, but I just, I, he's, yeah. he has such a, a resume. We're just shocked that he's, you know, not scoring more. So, um, we just have to assume, we assume it's just some other, uh, reason because of how excellent he's been for the, for the Red Wings. So, yeah. Um, I, again, contextually this is a relatively small sample size this is covid we have line juggling every night with uh our buddy mr um so you know we can it's just you know we have we have 10 games now right 10 games already yeah uh ten, we're 10th uh 10th through the season so we have game number eight coming up tomorrow yeah okay i mean yeah we can give it time but still uh you know, some trends are developing. Uh, Bobby Ryan, good. That's a trend. Uh, Mantha, less so. Also a trend. So there you go. Um, yeah, uh, I, we got a couple games coming up, Matt. Did you want to touch on those too? One quick thing that's popped up on Twitter before we started recording. Um, so this was uh, Prashant Dyer was making jokes about um, a, a conversation he had with Max Boltman. And then he started looking at the analytics. And of course, uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna change him to friend of the show because we've had a couple conversations on Twitter now. So he's getting upgraded from had a terrible time on the show to friend of the show. Um, okay. And what was shared with him was from Micah Blake McCurdy at Ineffective Math. So um, that's <laughs> that's a joke there. Uh, but at Ineffective Math, I highly recommend you guys check him out. Shared this with Prashant Dyer, and uh, again, this is not ours. This is from Micah Blake McCurdy. Uh, Mike, our uh, quote-unquote best defenseman, um, not having such a great season. <laughs> uh, so here's what we're looking at, Mike. Uh, you you can see on we're the left side Pan here. Is that Pangea? What is that? This <laughs> this is uh, taking a look at shots. Uh, okay. Where you want to see red shots are better is uh, basically where we start here. And, and this this top part is going to be the offensive side. And on the bottom part, you want to see more blue shots, uh, especially in front of the net. Uh, so when Heronix on offense, uh, here we go, Mike. Blue in front of the net. Uh, red, so not a lot of shots coming. A lot of red shots coming from uh, on the top of the circle and away from the net. Uh, but when we start to move down, and uh, take a look at penalty kill and uh, even strength defense. This is where it gets really ugly because there is basically a mountain being built <laughs> right in front of the net on either side <laughs> when Ronix on the ice. So here's the thing. We're talking about how do you fix this team. I think this is just worth mentioning. And uh, it, it's something where Prashant apologized to the Red Wings Nation uh, when he first uh, brought up his conversation with Max Boltman. Go back to uh, that graphic real quick, too. Absolutely. Uh, right. When he first brought up that conversation, because Red Wings fans were so mad at him for for bringing up like, could could this be an issue, uh, Philip Ronick? And um, d did you want to see offense or defense, Mike? Uh, right there is perfect. Um, if you're kind of looking at this and it looks like a, I don't know, like a mess of you know, multi, uh, melting cereal. I would say pretend you're a boxer, all right? So looking at the defensive side down there, 
Um, if you're getting punched and it only kind of hurts, it's probably going to be a bruise, right? It's going to be blue. Uh, but when you have open running sores and you're bleeding uh, your own blood, uh, that's not good. And it uh, looks like Kronik has definitely got some open wounds for our poor goalie uh, on five on five. It looks pretty rough. Yeah, I highly recommend anybody listen to the podcast. Check out the YouTube channel. That's where you'll this will be housed going forward. Uh, reminder, it's episode 15, so just go find it there. But, uh, Mike, that is the absolute best way to dissect this visual. Um, basically, everybody, uh, again, on the podcast, there's blood everywhere. And uh, we're going to need to find a way to mop this up. <laughs> So, uh, Mike, you were – I'm sorry. I talked all over you. We have a couple of games to talk about uh, before we wrap up. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I think we got to finish our Dallas series left, correct? Absolutely. Um, the, the thing that I, I was saying was was just let's let's not just hand this over to Dallas's power play, which is now – the Red Wings had a much better time than Dallas in their first series, but um, Dallas is now sitting at 9 of 16 – Absolutely unheard of numbers, uh, 56% on the power play. If we're going to go ahead and play the game of limiting uh, chances, limiting events, if we want to put it that way, we the best way for us to do that is going to just play a little bit more responsible. Let's just not let Dallas have any more power plays. Um, so we did a fantastic job. We made it to overtime with Dallas. Mike, they went to the Stanley Cup Finals. We did a great job. But if we want to take it that next step further, if we're looking for the thing to add to this, we're not just going to say, we'll fire the puck more. Because they did that. They owned puck possession, Mike. They owned expected goals. They owned high danger chances. So how do we find the win? Well, one, you cross your fingers and hope one of those goddamn chances actually goes in. Two, let's just, come on, let's limit, let's limit the power plays here for Dallas. If they're going to come in that hot, cross it off the list. Make it not a thing. Boom. You got to win yeah. against Dallas. Um, uh, well, you had a note here, too, about uh, playing a little goaltending. And uh, I know it looked rough for Bernier, but that, that's mostly Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. His 89 save percentage is 3.3 uh, goals against. But, I mean, against Columbus and Carolina, you know, he got our he has our only two wins uh, this season. Uh, lest, yeah. lest we forget. Um, and his Great save game. percentage is 935 and 917. Uh, you know, definitely... Much better than the 829 uh, save percentage he put up against Chicago in the bloodbath uh, when he gave up six goals. My God. Um, yeah. So hopefully that doesn't happen again in the near future. Uh, we don't leave our poor buddy out to dry. So, Well, uh, jumping into the, the Florida series, everybody, like I mentioned, I did want to touch on this too uh, since we won't see you guys till Sunday. Mike, you and I have a schedule to work out since Sunday's the Royal Rumble. Uh, but uh, Florida coming in also with some COVID issues. So we've only got three games to look at. So they're 3 0 0. And again, we'll be facing them Saturday and Sunday. So uh, pretty pretty busy for the Wing Dings. That's, that's pretty tough because uh, that means they get Friday off and then a full weekend of games. But um, Mike, they beat Chicago 5 2 and 5 4. So if you do the math, uh, we're going to lose by a lot. Florida should be putting up 15. Maybe 20 goals uh, if you do the formula the way – never mind. Um, and then they beat Columbus 4-3 uh, to three in a shootout. Uh, so they, they do uh, they do have another game coming up before we face them. But, um, I mean, they're, they're looking pretty good. Now, I, I did want to throw out there Bobrovsky, laughable. Uh, a lot of people like to make fun of him. Mike, he's got a 935 save percentage against the Wings, even though he's got 879 save percentage for Florida right now and a 335 goals against. So he's not having a hot start. Had a bad season last year after signing his $10 million contract. But he wins I mean, against he us. Did get, uh, he did get peppered against uh, Chicago and Columbus. Uh, so, I mean, Chicago's destroying everybody. But Columbus, uh, you know, we got, <laughs> that's, that's kind of that's kind of our, uh, that's you know, right at our level there. We're in the same, you know, weight class. So, yeah. uh, I think if that's uh, maybe a harbinger of things to come, uh, maybe we got a shot against this guy. Except, uh, you know. They they did. Uh, we have trouble getting to two goals, so seeing a four to three game really kind of, you know, tightens the old collar there. Cause we're not too good at getting past that two threshold. It's pretty tough. Right. And, uh, and I did want to throw out the Bobrovsky numbers against us in the last in last season. Mike, one shutout. 
in the first game against us. And then the next game, one goal against and a 964 save percentage. So, uh, yeah, Bob, Bobo was looking at like a 980 last season, two wins, one goal against in two games. So he didn't have a great season last year, but he made it look really easy against us. And a lot of that has to do with uh, what else uh, Florida has been tossing out there, including Barkov, who's I mean, he's he's a selkie fiend is the way I put it. He's he's nominated every year. Uh, so watch out for Barkov, 96 points in 18-19. In he fell a little flat uh, the next year with just, I mean, it was close to a point per game, but it didn't look as sexy as 96 points. Uh, yeah. Huberto is always locking it down. And then uh, their new addition, Patrick Hornquist, who came over in the trade, he's starting out hot and he's got five points in their first three games. Uh, so they, it looks like they've got some offensive firepower uh, to go along with uh, Bobrovsky, who's been just locking it down against Detroit over the last season. So. Hold your breath. One of those games will be Grice. Uh, we go low event. It won't matter how good of a season Hornquist is having. Um, or, you know, the star power they have at Barkoff and Huberto. But uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, Mike. And, uh, you know, go low event. Make it to that third period with a close game. And maybe maybe Mantha's 3.9 on ice save percentage goes up to five. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right. Um, Mike, we've got some wrestling to watch with only 40 minutes to go in our other two shows. Luckily, I did everything else so I can just sit there and watch wrestling while I put down uh, our blog for today's episode. So everybody check out some additional thoughts on bodpodcast.com slash Red Wings Rant. And I do have to throw out there too, Mike, we've got some big stuff coming up. If you are wrestling fans, uh, our, our preview episode for the Royal Rumble comes out tomorrow. You can follow along on our YouTube channel as the Brothers of Discussion will go live. So just subscribe to that. You can subscribe right now if you're watching. Um, and then uh, we are going to be with uh, on the Mr. Warren Hayes show this Saturday, uh, previewing the Royal Rumble as well. It's our favorite show. Mike, we've finally been coming out with content again on the website. <laughs> and uh, we've got some fun little games to play on Twitter and Instagram too. So you guys go check those out. It's uh, at BOD Podcast uh, on Twitter and at uh, brothers underscore of underscore discussion, where we do both Red Wings and pro wrestling on our Instagram page. So uh mike with that oh quick reminder again promo code thpn for DraftKings. and mike you're good you ready to roll off into the sunset buddy Woo-hoo. autobots roll out <laughs> let's do it